Hello all. All right. What I'm going to show you is an extreme example of dielectric relaxation. And uh, unfortunately, um, I actually arced with this wire to this L bracket into the housing of my motor. And then from the housing or, or the, the, laminated, the laminated steel or laminated iron, I went into the... Uh, w the windings and from the windings into the neutral line into the neutral line into my um, watt meter and my variable speed controller which is down there I need to fix an SCR got got nuked or it's the um, fuse which I have to figure out how to replace on that particular thing uh, but this guy hopefully it's just this fuse right here which is a 200 milliamp fuse at 240 volts or something like that that's the only thing I can think of that or possibly there's a diode in that too but that's just a matter of uh, a process of elimination and trying to find the right fuse for the for the job and so we'll see how well that works but anyways w what I want to get into is uh, the reason why I bring that up is because now I have a static spark gap the static spark gap um, is is not um, it, it is not working properly with the capacitance that I set up because I established a capacitance that's a little bit higher so I could use the rotary spark gap to create a higher impulse into my, bipo my bipolar or half wave um, resonant transformer and uh, so now this this capacitance is a little bit high for just a static spark gap so you'll see that it's not very resonant with a static spark gap there there's the, the impulses are not uh, are not uh, in line there's about a one-third so a one to three discharge timing in uh, the static spark gap and you you probably notice that when I turn this on but uh, I'll still but it still demonstrates uh, this electrostatic induction and um, the the idea of a neutral ground and uh, <laughs> going into the third stage of this which is another thing, if, if you look over there, give a little, little bit of light on it. I'm working on the third stage, and the capacitance is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, but uh, that is is uh, some coax that I stripped. Unfortunately, it wasn't Teflon inside, it was foam. So that's a little bit worrisome in its uh, dielectric, in, in its insulation of the, of the wiring. So it might take me a little while to... To muster up the resources for for what I'm planning on doing, but uh, nonetheless, you know, you live, you learn, and you keep moving forward. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna show an example of this. Here we go. And so you can see the timing was was off very much so the timing's off um, and that's because I'm I switch it to a static spark gap mode if I put some uh, air on that gap it probably would help the situation um, so that that's another option but I'm gonna fix my variable speed controller and go that route um, and if I uh, if I ground that uh, if I ground the motor chassis and the L bracket I, I have a uh, a worry in that when when I start doing what I am planning on doing that I'll get stray oscillations um, from ground into my motor chassis and then I'll damage my actual windings in my motor even more so I'm yeah so I'm trying to keep it just onto the neutral line that that's the idea behind it although I know that in standard electrical engineering you would ground that and it would be much safer right so I, I recognize that, but there's a reason. There's there's a method to my madness here. But <laughs> but uh, uh, so now I want to show you the purpose of that and what is going on and one wire transmission. And uh, as you can see, the neon right there is uh, is lit. Now I can put an LED on this too, and the LED will also light up. Um, but the problem is that I killed an LED doing this, and uh, I need um, I need to f to create an oscillator. And I've been working on the SGR or SJR, I should say, um, and it's been giving me lots of trouble, just like my old um, 
multiplier uh, resonant transformer setup. It's very difficult, very fine line. And I think that it basically boils down to the, the diodes are really important and also the winding ratios, but the diodes are really important too in that the the uh, germanium like junction barrier, the cat whisker diodes are super sensitive and uh, their proximity to the windings and stuff like that is seems like there's some important importance there. Um, let's see if we can switch this other side here. Mm, not so much. So I basically pulled off all the charge of that and I talked I talked through some of the some of the some of the charge that was probably slowly leaking off. But, um, again, like I said, it seems like that's kind of important because, um, the sensitivity of those germanium, okay, if you look at Colorado Springs notes, there is an, an experiment where Tesla, um, and I only bring this stuff up because we're all learning from each other, right? And, we, and, and, you know, ego stripped aside, you know, we're, we're trying to learn from each other. And trying to learn from one another and, and, and express different experiments in, in order to progress humanity, right? It doesn't matter our personal financial gain. I mean, none of that's going to mean crap when we're dead and gone, right? So um, it's, what we pro it's how we progress uh, entirely, not who we are individually. Um, well, okay, maybe I'm going off on a tangent a little bit too much there. But um, in the Colorado Springs notes, Tesla talked about um, a nickel chip hermetically sealed um, a nickel chip like um, basically like a sensitive device that would that could that could that could pick up emissions of electrostatic charges or or, or lightning impulses from the uh, ground to sky or sky to ground um, DC impulses basically that the earth is natu naturally creates um, and he could pick it up 500 miles away, a thousand miles away. Uh, it would it would still pick up this charge, and that was very interesting to him. And that's kind of essentially what what a cat cat whisker and junction barrier is doing is it's picking up extra sensitive um, electrostatic um, like contortions in in our atmosphere or um, or possibly magnetic fields. I mean the the two are pretty much inseparable right now according to standard physics so it's it's difficult to say um, exactly what's going on i mean i could i could theorize all day long but you know until we do actual experiments you know you don't really know so um so uh, with that babblery aside I'll, I'll do another i'll do another see this is why i put music on so i don't <laughs> i don't yammer away but <laughs> It gives me a time limit, but anyways, I'll do this. I'll do this one more time. I have another electrostatic experiment that uh, I did in the past, but it was it wasn't with a bipolar like this, with a neutral uh, or a, a virtual ground. Um, so I'll do that. I'll, I'll do the, another experiment and see how that works. But here we go. All right. Now let's check this with the neon because the neon won't get destroyed by the high amount of potential. So you can see, hopefully you can see, there is a decent amount of charge. And the reason why I say an oscillator is because if I let it sit and I tap it and I let it sit and I tap it and I let it sit and I tap it, there is a stored amount of energy, uh, uh, an energy density. Um, that you can oscillate from according to our perception for usable power. So, let's see it slowly starting to dim. Mm, hopefully you can still see that. But anyways, just a, uh, just a example of extreme electrostatic um, relaxation. Um, or dielectric relax relaxation, but if if I go to the capacitors where this instance is really happening in the hairpin, the hairpin setup before the potential is short circuited, um, when I short it to ground, 
there's one wire transmissions and uh, el electrostatically and a neon doesn't light up till about 50 or 60 volts of potential and the 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 current the total current or the, or the amperage I should say is uh, extremely low um, so that's something to note is that it, we're not I'm not talking about heating an element or anything like that I'm just talking about a phenomenon of, uh, of potential